special welcome to those who are online, just to let you know that the service will begin in a few minutes, maybe three or four, but also particularly to welcome those of you who join us that way so that we know that we're knit together as a community of faith, the people who are sitting in the pews on a given day and the people who are watching this morning but also watching throughout the week this worship service. So welcome to you all and many blessings.
Good morning. Welcome to our service of worship at Second Christian Congregational United Church of Christ. We are delighted to see all of you in the pews and all of you in our online community and begin with gratefulness, uh, grateful for guests, grateful for Dawn and her musical leadership that keeps you from trying to match the notes that I would choose. Thank you to our quartet this morning for their gifts on Jazz Sunday, to Kathy for her reading, to those who prepare uh, the coffee hour after our service, to those who work in so many different ways uh, to make this church a community of love. My name is Marin Tirabasi. I am here for the month of September while Brad Hurst is on sabbatical and hopefully leaving tomorrow for a 96-mile hike in Scotland with Linda. So exciting tales to tell. And hopefully he will return exactly on time. <laughs> Particular announcements uh, that we should make um, include the Rock of My Soul, Soggy Po Boys event this afternoon in Elliot Dawn. Will you speak to that? Thank you very much. Um, another announcement is that the deacons meet this Tuesday um, at 7, correct? 7, 7.30? Oh, deacon. 7. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> my own personal reminder. And um, here's in advance of next Sunday. So a week from Wednesday is International Gratitude Week. So the invitation that I have for you is to spend some time this week before next Sunday, which we will celebrate uh, gratitude, gratefulness, to think about things that you're grateful for. And then I will invite you to share some of those, which means it could be silent or spoken. Um, and if you go on too long, I've got the hook. <laughs> but words of gratitude as we let this week be a time to focus on it and then celebrate it next week. Are there other announcements that we should share? Okay. We are um, a mask-affirming church, and we invite those who are vaccinated to wear their masks uh, while singing, and those who have chosen uh, not to be vaccinated to wear their masks throughout the service if you are willing. Um, you know what I'm going to say. Whether you're gathering with us in person or worshiping with us online, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We say it each week, and we mean it each week.
Our call to community is printed in our bulletins. Let us read responsively. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is a morning of hope. What are the things that give us hope? No, that's... <laughs> okay. Try this again. <laughs> I am asking, I'm, what I'm asking for is what are you quickly, in a few, one or two words, silently or more loudly, what are you grateful for this week? Today. Oh, hope. What, are, what gives you hope today? Sorry. Grateful comes next. That she's breathing in and out and walking the earth to do good. That way I'm repeating it so people at home can hear. Yes? I'm grateful for four of them on my board tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Don. Don is definitely grateful for cortisone for his board tonight so now he can see. generosity and goodwill of certain people among us. Yes, the, definitely for, for, for hope is the generosity and goodwill of so many people among us. This is a season of gratitude. What are things for which you are grateful? Family. Family, definitely. Friends. Friends. Children. Great music. Great music, definitely. We will come to an evening of peace. What brings peace to our world? course, love. Every day is precious, but we remember the Sabbath day. We set aside the Sabbath day for rest, remembering, rejoicing. Please stand as you are able as we sing our opening hymn number 60, Cantemos al Señor. Let's sing unto the Lord. Dawn will sing the first verse in Spanish. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you can feel free to join her if you like. We'll then all sing both verses in English together.
Okay. Let us pray our gathering prayer. Guide, Savior, standing still, center our crowded lives. Bring us into community and understanding of one another. And yet, do not leave us in our pews this morning, but call us to following you down the days and ways of the week to come. Amen.
Let us pray together before the reading of scripture. In the jigsaw of our lives, Holy One, you feel our deep need for insight. Help us to learn in these old words of scripture something that matches our pieces of need and helps us make sense of the puzzles before us. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from Psalm 143, verses 1 through 8. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications in your faithfulness. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter the judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like the, those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me, my heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I think about all your deeds. I meditate on the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Selah. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. The Gospel reading is from Luke 15. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which of you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having 10 coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me! For I have found the coin that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. These are the words of scripture. Let us hear within them the voice of God. We pause for our musical reflection.
that may be enough. Here it is prayer. Amen. I remember the days of old. Kathy Rooney read from the Psalms. It's a deep part of our lives, remembering the days of old, or there would not be photograph albums, high school reunions. No, I am never going back to Des Moines. Diaries, anniversaries. And we grieve it when someone dear to us or we ourselves start forgetting those long ago days. I remember the days of old is foundational for both living in faith and moving forward in faith. But what days of old do we remember? Last Monday, I was here with Kathy and Tim Rooney and Kathy's mother, Hilda, for bell ringing for five minutes as we do each year, September 5th at 345, that side of the Piscataqua, and 347, Naval Shipyard side of the Piscataqua, to remember the Portsmouth Peace Treaty between Russia and Japan in 1905 after two years of terrible war. Russia had one of the largest military forces in the world, and Japan was barely industrialized after years of isolation, but courageous as the Ukrainians in our day are. The treaty was negotiated under Teddy Roosevelt, who received the Nobel Peace Prize for it. Because it would be too hot for these visitors in Washington, that's why they came here to the Naval Shipyard, gathered together for the many, many hours it took to make and sign a treaty that began 30 years of peace. We ring, we remember. What days of old do we remember? Since Thursday, we have not been able to op open a computer, a newspaper, or turn on television without remembering the 70-year-old reign of Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Montbatten Windsor, both the high moments and the hard ones. Some of us remember her coronation, some don't. I was just a little too young, a um, year and a half, so not quite there. More of us remember, though some do not, 21 years ago, the destruction of the World Trade Center, damage and death at the Pentagon, the downed plane in Pennsylvania, all part of a planned terrorist attack with terrible losses. You probably don't remember that on that day, Queen Elizabeth II broke four centuries of a tradition by playing the Star Spangled Banner in solidarity with the US at the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace. 9-11, many families today are remembering dear ones Others are wondering whether the wars that followed for such a long time were the way to honor them. What days of old do we remember? The musicians today remember Catano Veloso, the Brazilian musician who, with others, including his sister, developed Tropicalisma, which fused Brazilian pop with rock and roll and avant-garde avant music. Veloso described the move movement as a wish to be different, not defensive, like the right-wing Brazilian military government, which vehemently opposed tropicalismo. He was imprisoned and exiled for his music. He was imprisoned and exiled for his music. And of course, his leftist politics addressing issues of ethnicity, poverty, homelessness, and capital corruption. 
He has a philosophy degree, was honored with two Grammys, two Latin Grammys, and an Academy Award nomination. We remember the days of old, the famous ones. And today, with all those other memories swirling, we also remember very, very personally, and it's a secular celebration, Grandparents' Day. OK? Probably an occasion for many just to send a card. But in a sense, it's what the psalm means. Because on this day, it's when we do our individual remembering of some elder, biological relation or not, some elder who stepped in and guided our lives at some point that was a turning point that shaped how we would become. OK, I'm doing all this making you talk stuff. I'm just going to say in a moment that anyone who has a particular first name of a grandparent silently or just murmuring all together, not individually, not waiting for that wonderful moment of silence, just to name them. Senior Bell. It's Olivia, Sarah, Miss Sarah. Grandparents. Older, far older than any of these. And my grandmother was born in 1886 are the stories we have in scripture, the ones we turn to for wisdom for today, older than that. So in Luke 15, Jesus is remembered as telling three stories about lost things. It's the case that people often think of the first two as sort of preliminary practice sketches for the last, the parable often called the prodigal child story about a parent whose older child is angry because the younger child has taken and wasted an entire inheritance. And when that child is forgiven and celebrated, refuses to come into the party, and that parent goes out in the road, as he did to receive the younger one, to convince the older one to join them from music and dancing. Now, the first two parables, which are ours today, you'll find that one in March, last March, OK? Today are often considered preliminary sketches, or better, openers. OK, have any of you ever opened for another act? Show of hands. <laughs> OK. and. Did you feel that what you played was just an early, pale version of what the featured performer was going to play? Out loud, yes or no? No. I'm really glad you said no. I was looking for no. Because that's not what these are. These are in themselves stories that he told. The first of the connected and equal stories is about a shepherd. Now, I've just returned from Iona in Scotland, and there are sheep all over the place. And they have, they chalk sort of their behinds, their hips with different colors, so that they can wander all over the island. They can't get lost. They come to the sea. But that isn't what first century Judea was like. It was a place of mountains and cliffs and bandits and people who were glad to take somebody else's sheep. So contrary um, to all economic wisdom, when the sheep is astray, Jesus asks, which of you would leave a flock of 99 sheep to go find one lost one? And the answer should be none of you, right? Would you actually? leave in a place with wolves and danger 99 sheep that are there for the sake 
of finding one lost one. But the point that he makes is the shepherd that does that is God. The second story is about a woman who treasures the 10 silver wedding coins uh, that she wears in a sort of a circlet around her hair. But when the string holding them breaks, one rolls away and is lost. Now the woman loves her nine silver coins, uh, but they aren't enough. They aren't what she remembers. And so she lights a lamp in the daytime and she searches all over her house, under everything, around corners, in cracks, for the one that rolled away. And then she finds it and throws a party for her neighbors, certainly spending far more than that coin was worth in food and drink, and Jesus says, that woman is God. One of the significant distinctions we're supposed to pick up beyond the normal Luke practice of always uh, pairing a parable about a man with a parable about a woman next, um, is that the sheep wander, food-oriented as they are, so that there is some agency, while a coin falls simply because something else breaks, in this case, a string. And we read these stories, and we are meant to be comforted because the people we hope God is out finding right now include both experiences of being lost because of bad decisions they've made, addictions they've fed, marriages they've broken with infidelity, unkind words they've spoken. They wander. Others of those we love who are lost simply fall when a cord is broken, not their fault at all. A young woman, the morning after a college party having been roofied, a person hearing a diagnosis that is the one most dreaded, cancer, dementia, the person who has work unfairly terminated. Nine others, nine others can have that same situation and live with the kind of support and care that allows them to be easily found and put back together, but in those someone is going to roll away because there isn't that support and that was the thing that got them lost. We may look at a personal situation or a global situation and recognize something vast and overwhelming and beyond the pot of Gilead balm in our kitchen counter or the wisdom of the doctors we know or the politicians we elect and settle for the fact that there'll be a lot of collateral damage and some of that will continue for generations, but the nature of God is to walk away unwisely from the sheltered flock into the night or grab a broom and hunt for every last lonely child. And the nature of being a Christian and following Jesus is to be willing to be You can't say, you can't tell Brett I said this, to be Siri for God, you know, on your phone, be Siri for God and help God find the one who has wandered away. Or to hold up the lamp high so that shed lights on all aspects of the situation, even when our arms are weary and we may not think that perhaps the prize is proportionately worth it. And the nature of being a Christian and following Jesus is to be willing to come to a rather ordinary party and celebrate the precious above all things of finding and knowing that some sheep that may wander again is with the flock today. Some coin, those strings can be broken over and over again, is held in the hands of love. The nature of being a Christian and following Jesus is to remember our days and pass on what we found in them. 
I'm ringing a bell that there may be peace again. I'm remembering the tower's fall and all the losses that followed, that there may be vigilance. I'm remembering Queen Elizabeth's childhood radio speech and her Twitter account and her TikTok dancing and her love of corgis, that in the weightiest of times there can be laughter. I am rem remembering Caetano Veloso's Tropicalismo, that I can open my heart to everyone's song. I'm remembering the old people in my life, that I can reach out to the children who are around me now, whether they have any biological relationship to me or not, with a call of kindness. After all, what did peace negotiator Teddy Roosevelt say? It's probably what he is known best for, and the answer is, speak softly and carry a big stick. I remember to gather the wandering sheep with soft and kind words and carry a big broom because lost is always happening around us and God looks to us for the kind sweeping. Amen. Our prayer hymn is number 579, Standing in the Need of Prayer. Do I dare say settle down? <laughs> we do come to our time of morning prayer and begin by gathering together uh, joys and concerns 
that we would like to lift up in our prayer this morning. Alan, are there any from the um, Facebook crowd? Not yet, but there may be. Anyone here, a prayer concern for joy, for sorrow, anything to hold up? Yes, For Jeff, who has COVID, for Winnie and her family, Winnie being in hospice. Yes. Janice and Chris George. Janice and Chris George. Is that a health situation? Yes, Janice is in hospice. Yes. Bill and Michelle Sinclair expecting another grandchild. Yes. For Charles Luigi, who wanted to be here this morning. Charlie Colucci. Who wanted to be here this morning. But had some movement issues. Okay, movement issues. So couldn't be here today. For our son who made it. Surgery okay, but going to continue with the second surgery. And his name is Doug. Doug. For Doug, who's made it through the first surgery but anticipates a second one. Samira for her ongoing health problems. Your grandson called out of the blue last night to come and have dinner with you today? Well, yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday. Okay. Lovely. Surprise. Let us be together in prayer. Grandparent God, in all the ways that is good, we give you thanks for your nurturing and caring, your helping us to grow spiritually and humanly, the warmth of your embrace when we have trouble, and the tenderness of your support when we need to be urged forward. We also thank you for all the people who nurtured us in our lives in different places and times, and release into your unfailing love all the imperfections and hurts of human relationships and ask for your healing, unbinding, and new wholeness. We seek your strength to be nurturers of others in our families, neighborhoods, and communities. We ask that we all invite one another to dinner, that we all sing with grace at what is good, that we all with Bill and Michelle, anticipate the birth of something new in our lives. We pray today for those in our hearts who have lost family and friends in Saskatchewan and Memphis this week and in Maryland, those facing the violence of weather and heat and flood, and each of the people in our hearts today Doug, Jeff, Winnie, Janice, Chris, Charlie, who need your special, hopeful and healing grace. We pray as well for students and teachers, for administrators and librarians, for school nurses, food service employees, custodial staffs, of the schools that are just beginning. We praise you, O oh God, for the beauty of this day, the warmth of the day, the cool of the night, the needed rains, the beginning hints of autumn, and the ordinary gifts of grace that surround us. 
we ask your tenderness with all who mourn Elizabeth. We ask your grace to be with all who remember someone who died in New York, Pennsylvania, DC. We remember with love those who cross all of our news feeds. And also, we ask your love and tenderness for each one of us, for you know what it is that we need, and you know how to help us find it. Be a finder within us, we pray, and seal our prayer with the words that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The rubric in our bulletin says we offer of ourselves and we do that continuously, offering our presence, our kindness, our talents, our time, our energy when there's like only this amount left, we offer of ourselves. And we also offer the gifts of our resources. And so we dedicate those, those that are received in the back of the church, those that are sent online, those that bypass this particular place of worship but find their way in so many nonprofits to support the work that they do. And so we celebrate what it is to offer ourselves and pause during the music to feel ourselves as givers. Thank you. 
Let us pray together. You can keep standing because we're going to sing in a minute. God, let your steadfast care be expressed through the offering of our gifts. We dedicate them to your service and our frail and precious lives to your way of love. Amen. And the final hymn is number 434. We'll sing it all. May God lift up the light of a loving countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always. Amen. <laughs>